provide unique opportunities for researchers to use and also to increase their visibility. But most importantly, what is very, very unique and amazing about social media is you have the ability to engage with a very broad audience. Now, research visibility is very important in academia. Even when you're going for promotion and even when you want to apply for grants, people need to know you. Who are you? You know, so re um, social media allows us to share our work with a wider audience and recognition in what we do in our research and also, you know, um, advance our career. So what is very important is choosing the right social media because with the right social media strategy, you can be able to share your information, your findings, raise awareness of your research topics and build your professional network which is very important and crucial in this digital age. So why use social media then? The first thing, you know, everyone knows is to reach a wider audience. It's very important, you know, and uh, you build your followers and people are following you and engaging with them. It also provides opportunities for networking. I mean, I've met quite a lot of contacts and I'll share a little bit more when I go to LinkedIn. Important contacts during um, um, through social media, just networking opportunities. Increased citation. Now, there was a research that was done that shows that um, articles that have been actively promoted on social media, they receive more views, more downloads and citations than those that have not been, okay? And the important thing is it exposes you to policy uh, makers and not even public opinion. So people can then actually engage. And if there's any particular issue in that particular area you're researching, they'll be able to reach out to you because you're the expert in that field. You're known. You're able to influence people. So looking at the graph I have here, uh, and, uh, you can see that where readers go to get content, search in Google or other search engines. A, a Facebook feed. This is from th uh, 3,000 uh, consumers in the US and Germany. Go directly to publication website you know, true emails, read my tweets and stuff like that. So you can see if this was to be repeated again now, this was in 2017, you see that most people go to Twitter, go to, you know, LinkedIn or go to ResearchGate and things, uh, uh, stuff like that. So what are then the advantages of social media compared to traditional academic publishing and networking? To start off with, you know, the reach, Social media allows researchers to reach a much broader audience beyond traditional academic circles. If we were to publish your article in open access, you you pay a lot of money to start off with, you know. And also, the reach is not that broad; it's just people that subscribe to that journal or people that read it. While social media breaks that down and gives accessibility to lots of people, more accessible platforms than traditional um, academic publishing network. It allows us to, it's free to use it and as, you know, it can be accessed from anywhere in the world as long as you have an internet connection, which is really good. So it makes it a platform for researchers from diverse background. So the reach is wide, amazing. The other important point is the speed provides a fast and efficient way to share your information and also updates. Very, very important, okay? Because you can share your work in real time as you're getting the results, you're tweeting it or you're sharing it, and you can receive immediate feedback from peers and brother public. They can tell you, oh, have you tried this? You know, you can get opinions immediately, real time. Very cost effective. So for researchers to promote their work, it requires minimal financial investment compared to publishing in academic journals or attending conferences. So imagine you don't pay anything for it, just click on the internet and you're able to share your work to a big wide audience and get people's feedback. So a cost effectiveness is one important advantage. The other one is collaboration. I mean, this is one of the most, you know, um, part I would say I've really benefited from. It's allowed me to be able to collaborate with colleagues worldwide from America, from South Africa, from Nigeria, and all parts of the world, India, you know, Pakistani. So collaboration, social media provides opportunities for researchers to collaborate with peers from around the world. 
which can lead to new collaboration, funding opportunities, and career advancements. It's just unbelievable and amazing way to collaborate. Because sometimes when you apply for funding, you need people from diff, you know um, four or five or six countries. How are you going to get them? So you build your network through social media. Then you're able to you know get them involved in grant applications. So overall, social media provides an opportunity to connect with a broad range of individuals across different fields, institutions, and location. Wow, the question <laughs> that everyone asks is what are the benefits of increasing research visibility? Why do you need to do that? To start off with, you have a better job opportunity. Because once you're known in your area, you have, you know, um, the employers are more likely to notice your research. You know, if you have a very strong online presence and a track record of impactful research. When people apply for jobs and we interview, we look at their social uh, media profiles. I'm part of interviewing, you know, um, in my university, we do look at that to see what's their presence like, what research area, how good are they? So you can pick all those things from um, social media. The other important thing is increased citation and collaboration. So you're more, if you're more visible, you're more likely to be cited by other researchers, you know, and this will mean you have a higher impact factor and this will, you know, your profile is also stronger. Moreover, increased research visibility can lead to more collaborations, you know, as the researchers are more likely to lead to more, because as you're more likely to be visible, people know you, they want to collaborate with you, and they know that you're an expert in that area. So you'll be able to reach out to people, or people can reach out to you that are working in similar fields. So it's quite important. The other thing, other thing is increased funding opportunities. You get to see other people, you know, and be invited to funding opportunities. It's very important. You know, because in research, in academia, you need to be able to get funds. For promotion, you need to bring funds into the university. That's the way it works. But the most important thing is improved reputation and recognition. Okay? Now, if you increase the research visibility, you can be ex an established researcher within your field. You know, people know you. You'll be invited to speak at conferences. You'll be invited for opinions about things that are happening. You know, for example, from what I do on you know, um, LinkedIn, I've been invited as a consultant to so many you know, um, different food industries, and I'll share a little bit more about it later on. So you're known, you're recognized, you've built your reputation, and people want to work with you. They, need you. they want to know your opinion. What do you think about this process I'm setting up? So there's so many benefits, I can't even begin to list them all, of increased research visibility once you're known in your area as an expert. Now, the most important thing is choosing the right platform. Platforms, there's so many platforms available. But the most popular ones are, you know, are things like Twitter, LinkedIn, ResearchGate, Academia EDU. YouTube and Instagram, they all have the advantages and also disadvantages. So they have their unique features, you know? So it's best it left for you to choose, to decide which one you need, what are your goals, and what are the target audience that you require. Then you can now focus on that one. For example, myself, I decided I wanted to focus on LinkedIn and I'm really focusing on LinkedIn. And I'll share tips of what I'm doing at the moment to really build my LinkedIn profile. So Twitter is a social media platform where users can share short messages called tweets. And Twitter has over 300, 330 million monthly active users. The advantage is it's really fast-paced platform and allows researchers to quickly gather data on current events or trending posts, okay? It also provides access to diverse range of opinions and perspectives, making it a very valuable tool for exploring public opinions and sentiments. However, there are certain disadvantages. And it's like the character limit on Twitter. 
can limit the depth of responses and it can be prone also to fake news and bolts okay and you know these are some of the disadvantages but once you're active in twitter and you know how to use it you can work it to your advantage okay so how what are the best uh, giving you some tips on how to use twitter now so like i said the benefits increase reach of a diverse audience real-time engagement for collaboration and knowledge sharing you can build a personal brand as an expert in your field in twitter so there are certain tips for using twitter for example use hashtag okay so hashtag helps to categorize and organize tweets making it easier for others to use or other users to find what you're tweeting about and you're able to engage with research related content so hashtag whatever if it's a uh, you know food waste so anyone that is looking for food waste they'll be able to come to your tweet and see what you have said the other thing is it gives you the opportunity to engage with other uh, researchers so it's a social platform so it's important that you engage with others you know join their conversations retweet what they have tweeted and you'll get uh, follow people on twitter and they'll get to follow you back so another tip is share interesting content important because when you share interesting content you'll be you know people will like to retweet what you have shared and will like to make comments about what you've shared so very important so uh, things you can share things like rela you know articles when you publish an article tweet about it okay any research finding you know tweet about it you know because this can help increase the engagement and build a following on Twitter. It's very important that you do that if you want to be visible in your area. And also just to say, Twitter is really, really diverse. You have lots of policymakers, governments, all on Twitter. They're all on Twitter. So you can be found from Twitter. You can be you know, um, reached out through tweets that you send. And if people know you in Twitter, it's really important. So moving on to the next, LinkedIn. LinkedIn is my favorite. Honestly, LinkedIn is a very professional networking platform with over 700 million members worldwide. It is a very powerful tool for researchers to increase their research visibility and connect with other professionals in their field. LinkedIn has got so many advantages. Okay, It's easy for researchers that are researching on related topics to be able to connect with one another Okay, even for employment, people find jobs through LinkedIn. People, I see very, very intellectual, highly educative, you know, materials being shared on LinkedIn. Okay, but there are certain disadvantages. The user base may not be representative of the general public population, unlike Twitter, where you have everybody from government to everybody there. And the platform may not be as useful for researching topics, outlets outside of employment on career related topics so it's just quite narrow in terms of the reach but it's amazing what you can get from linkedin so the benefits then apart from increased visibility professional branding and that is what i've been trying to use to linkedin for and also opportunities for collaboration i can't even stress how important this is it gives you amazing opportunities to collaborate with other people tips i have many more tips but i'll just start with these tips for using linkedin effectively complete your profile this is so important your profile you know it's got to be engaging people will like to know more about you from reading your profile so complete it to the best of your ability join relevant groups because when you join relevant groups and you tweet have something on linkedin they get to share it to other people so people get to see what you you have on your linkedin post share your research updates and also engage with other professionals in your field. Try and follow people and connect to people in your field. So um, very important, I'll go deep into LinkedIn because it's my favorite, like I told you. So in order to get noticed on LinkedIn, you need to do the following. First of all, optimize your LinkedIn profile. Add a photo, a professional photo, and complete the recommended sections like about, your education, your work experience, put some publications that you want people to see, and what organization do you work in? What have you worked in before? Put your history because people look for jobs, opportunities through LinkedIn. And I've been poached, you know, you know, and people are coming, Helen, you know, I've been sourced out from LinkedIn for jobs 
a really important, even a professor, professorial job in um, outside Midlands where I live, just from my LinkedIn and from what I've been posting. So it's very important if you want employers to notice you to have that completed properly. Now, send out and accept connections requests from people. Your connection list can be diverse or consist of only people in your career path. It's your choice. Make sure that you connect with active users of the app. What I did when I started was connecting with every lot of people and they were not accepting my connection. So I went back and checked and I found that quite a few people were not active. The last time they were on their LinkedIn was like five years ago. So I disconnected from all those people, you know, you know, and then what I look out for people that are really active users and I connect with them because I know they're going to see the connection and accept it or go and look at my profile. So ensure that you connect with active users. The most important thing is try creating content from time to time to create a personal brand for yourself. It could be once or twice a week or once a month. It depends on your time and, you know, there's no pressure. It depends on what you want to do. I had to go every week, once a week, because I wanted to grow my following to be able to grow the program, Masters in Food Safety. I wanted to use that to increase people, you know, because people that come to my program, mostly British or from China. And I wanted a diverse, you know, audience coming to do Masters at the University of Birmingham. So I was intentional using LinkedIn to promote Masters in um, Food Safety that I'm the director of, okay? So I was posting things every week, engaging with people. Right now we have people from India, parts of the world coming to do MSc food safety. It, it's not just British and the, the Chinese. We have a wider audience now and all from, you know, LinkedIn, being intentional, posting every week, okay? Try to keep your profile alive. It's very important. So you can use a mixture of text, images, videos, or PDFs, whatever that you like, post, but make sure is you know um, you've read it for typos, and it's really um, clear what your message you're trying to promote or say. What you're trying to say is very clear. Here are some popular LinkedIn content ideas. So new job, put it on LinkedIn. Promotion, put it on LinkedIn. You'll be amazed how people want to celebrate with you. Graduation, I always post graduation because it's a time of joy. When my students are graduating, I take photos and I post it on LinkedIn, on Facebook, you know, just celebrating. And Thanksgiving, these are some examples. Sometimes you can post what you love about your job or workplace. Something that is motivational or inspirational content, you know, post that. Expository posts like postgraduate application process, how is it done? educational content that will give an insight into your area of expertise. Something else you can post is something about a career or a business milestone. You can post that. Okay. So these are some of the popular LinkedIn content ideas I've picked up over the years. And then I use that. The other thing I want to talk about is how to optimize your LinkedIn account. It's very important you do that. So on your platform, you need to indicate links to other profiles, like Twitter, ResearchGate, your Orchid, and your personal website. Have it all in on your LinkedIn. Why is that? One other thing I've done on my LinkedIn you know, uh, post is I've connected my Twitter to it. So whenever I put something on LinkedIn, it tweets for me automatically. So that is you know, ways you can actually optimize. And also for my Instagram, I've linked to my Facebook. So when I post on my Instagram, automatically, you know, shows on my Facebook. So these are ways you can optimize your um, social media platform. So one post goes to two places. So delete posts and pictures that look unprofessional, irrelevant, harmful. So it's very important that you keep it very professional. Now, this is so important. Key. You need to use keywords that best encapsulate your skills and experience. So ensure that the keywords you've used are very relevant. You know, like food safety. I want everyone looking for about food safety to, you know, see me. So I use the word food safety, food microbiology, because that encapsulates what my skills are. So make sure you use the right keywords on the LinkedIn profile. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is create content that is authentic and engaging. 
what I did when I started was make a list of topics and questions that are relevant and of interest to me and also the potential target audience I have. So I have a list of things I want to do posters about and I'm ticking it through as I go along. Topics that are very interesting. What do I think? Because I wanted to reach out to the food industry, wanted to reach out to people in academia, wanted to reach out to people in policy. So I decided I had to make a list of what I think might be of interest to them. And then I post, you know, on those things. So make a list is very important. Then you can use different types of media formats where possible images, text, video. That you can adjust according to feedback of target audience. So I use mostly posters and text message, but sometimes I get requests from people saying, Helen, could you have a poster about on this particular topic or that topic? So then I adjust my um, my list because I have a list that has go down the list of what I want to post about and what I want to talk about. So sometimes you do get real engaging feedback and requests from the target audience. The other thing is to be consistent. Consistency is key to promoting yourself on social media. This is a question of continuously improving quality of the content and maintaining a frequency of posting, staying connected. It's very important. I remember once, because I tend to post every Monday, but there was a week I was particularly very busy and I posted by Thursday, so people were asking, Helen, where are you? We're waiting for your post for Monday. Then I realized, wow, so people actually know that I'm posting every Monday. So anyway, I try not to, be, you know, um, if big post every Monday, but when I, Tuesday, it's okay. So but it's very interesting that people really notice things like that. Now, this comes to the very, very exciting part. You know, I really, when I think about the impact of LinkedIn, to my academic career and to my visibility and to what I do, even it helped, you know, when I was applied for a promotion to show what I have done, you know. The next slide will show, you know, talk about what the benefits, not all, just some of the benefits I want to share today. Okay, the first one is, you can see a picture of myself with some um, people from, they, they produce this light bulb, Biogen, and this light bulb, BioVDA is their name, kills bacteria and viruses and, you know, spores. So this company got in touch with me and they said, Helen, we want you to come on board as a distributor and also for me to validate and verify their light bulb they've come across, you know, they produce. It's not UV based. So I've signed a contract with this company, BioVDA, they're called, and I'm going to be doing some validation, verification, and also promotion based on Apart from this company, there are other companies that have, you know, reached out to me I'm working with at the moment, okay? But I just wanted to share cases because this is the latest, you know, uh, contract I've just signed now. And it's really exciting because we're, I'm able to employ somebody to do the validation analysis. And then we can go into um, promotion of that particular light bulb in the food industry. The next one is another company called Public Policy in Africa, PPIA. So they got me to do some policy documents in Africa during COVID, you know, and I, and from that policy document, I was able to meet amazing economists and people that are really, really clever, you know, from, you know, um, Germany, you know, they're based in Germany, but they're Africans. And we're able to come up with amazing documents that were published. And, you know, I was able to contribute to a policy document. So that was really amazing. Another company that reached out to me is called, they're called Sultana of Samosas. They're based in Canada and they produce millions of samosas every day. So I'm in the advisory board, but they wanted me to be part of that to help mentor their food microbiologists there. So it was really amazing when the um, executive director got in touch, emailed me, I like what you do on LinkedIn. Do you mind mentoring people in my group? Can we have a talk? And we arrange a couple of meetings and it's really good, you know, to see that people really notice what you're doing and they want to be engaged with you. Now, I'm writing a book at the moment, all from LinkedIn. You know, people have reached out to Helen, do you want to contribute to my book or can we write a book together? So I have a couple of books that are working at the moment. And, and one other thing I did, I did publish a book um, last year, which I also shared on LinkedIn. Probably that's why everyone now saw Helen is writing a book. Do you mind collaborating with me or can we you know, get together and write a book? So amazing opportunities coming out. 
the most amazing opportunities I had was article writing. During the COVID, I had quite a lot of groups that wanted to write articles because I put in one or two that I wrote with a couple of um, Nigerians. And I had lots of groups that spun out of that that wanted to, can we write articles together? Could you show us how to write articles? So during COVID, we had Saturday Club where we'll get together and then we'll write articles, you know, writing perspective pieces. And that came up, they're not just food microbiologists, they're medical students. You know, so it was like students across. So we had quite a lot of articles. I think we had a target of a lot. I can't even say the number here. You'd be shocked. And we did that during the COVID period. But the most important thing about LinkedIn is the collaborations. I mean, I met quite a lot of people that I collaborate with. They come to the university and visit. And I have opportunity to go and visit them. So collaborations and collaborators have come out from my LinkedIn sharing. And also I've had invitations to conferences, which I've gone to present. Some are virtual conferences, some are face-to-face, -face, all from LinkedIn. So there's so many benefits on it from making yourself visible, letting people see what you do on social media. The next one I like to talk about is ResearchGate. ResearchGate is a social networking site designed specifically for researchers and scientists. It's an online platform where researchers can connect, collaborate, and share their research publication with other researchers around the world. I am really active on ResearchGate also, okay? So the advantage of using ResearchGate for research visibility, there are things like, you know, people get to see your work, connect, they download it, okay? And they have opportunities for collaboration. Amazing. And the another thing is that you can track your impact factor, you know, for, you know, the result, like that to look at H index and, you know, so you can check it on ResearchGate or you can check it on Google Scholar. So what are the tips for using ResearchGate effectively? Complete your profile. Profile is very important. It tells everything about you. Have a picture in it. Make sure that, um you know, um, your profile you link it also to your website if you have one, okay? And all the relevant information about you have it there. Connect with other researchers, okay? So it's a social networking site, so it's important to connect with other researchers in your field. You can do this by following other researchers, joining research groups, and participating in discussions. The next is to share your research publication. Oh, it's really, really very good for share research publications, you know, because it allows you to share it with other researchers around the world. And this can help increase the visibility of your research and potentially lead to more citation, especially if you're able to share the article you have. Some journals allow you a, a space of 10 days to share articles, put it up there immediately, you know, because if it's not open access, when they say you have 10 days to share it or, you know, you can put a private copy there also if you wanted. Okay, making sure you're not breaching the contract you have with the journal. Another thing you can do is answer questions related to your research. So ResearchGate allows you to answer questions, you know, and you can help establish you as an expert in your field because your opinion, you know, you can air your opinion there. And, you know, people then tend to know you. They can come to you because you've published something in that area and they're wanting answers or wanting you to point them in any direction. Or if they're stuck in a, you know, in the research in a particular area, they can seek your opinion. So it's really important, you know, um, research that you keep it active and alive, not just putting something and just ignoring it. You have to interact and follow other people as well. So the next one is YouTube. YouTube is a popular online video sharing platform that allows users to upload, view, and share videos. I'm not very proactive in YouTube, but I use it for academic purposes. So for example, it become an important platform for researchers to share their work and increase their visibility. So there are certain advantages to YouTube. And I would encourage you if you're able um, and you want to use YouTube, okay? Because, you know, you can provide your perspective and opinion about your research in YouTube is highly searchable everyone goes to youtube you know so it makes it easy for people to find you there so but the only thing is that sometimes youtube has some fake news as well and, you know it's you know not everyone believes what is on youtube but still for research purposes, it can be very professional okay so 
YouTube is very, and people have heard about people monetizing their YouTube channels, which is good, but YouTube is not something I use regularly. University uses it. I use it for my teaching and that's my extent of use, but it's very important and very good if you're really good at making videos and stuff like that. Why not use YouTube? So the benefits are you get discovered, engagement, active engagement. You have billions of people watching you if you put in interesting videos. So you can increase your reach. So tips for using YouTube effectively is creating engaging videos related to your research. Use keywords and tags, optimize your sociability. You can also promote your videos on other social media platforms. I have a YouTube platform, like I said, but it's just for my teaching purposes. So you, I can also use that for sharing my research. Okay, YouTube is very important. I mean, I, it's something I'd like to build on in future. So I encourage you, if you're very good at video, promoting your content, use YouTube, it's very good. I think this might be the last, I think, Instagram. Instagram is a popular social media platform that allows users to share photos and videos. And it has over a billion monthly active users, making it an attractive platform for researchers to increase their visibility. Instagram is really good. I'm not very active in Instagram, but I do share some of my posts and some of my quotes on Instagram. And I'm still building on the Instagram platform. The advantages is, is a visual, you know, because it's very visual, it makes it a useful platform for researching topics related to aesthetics or visual culture. People like vid pictures, images. It is popular with the younger demographic. So my daughter would not understand Instagram, but she is more of, a, sorry, she will not understand LinkedIn, but she's more of an Instagram person, you know? She, she's like, oh, LinkedIn is for all the people. Facebook, oh, no, mommy. But Instagram, so younger demographics tend to use Instagram quite a lot. So it provides access to unique sample of users. So I've started posting things on food safety on Instagram recently. So the disadvantage is it just focuses on images and short captions. This can, you know, limit the depth of what you can post on Instagram, but it's okay. Okay, it's okay. Anything you know that can help showcase that you are an expert in your area, you can use that. So the benefits then will be like increase engagement, increase your reach, building a community. The tips for using Instagram effectively will be share photos and graphics related to your research. High quality photos, very important. Use relevant hashtags, engage with other researchers and followers, and use Instagram stories to showcase your research activities. Very important. There's so many companies, you know, food safety and blogs that I'm seeing a lot now on Instagram, and I'm following them. And I'm, you know, resharing and, you know, I'm linking in with them and engaging with them. So it's very important that you find your foot in Instagram if you wanted to use Instagram as a way to promote your research. Now, the most important thing is as a researcher, you like to see how the impact of your research. There are different types of tools you can use, like Google Scholar is a free tool that indexes the um, literature from a wide range of disciplines, you know? So it allows you to track your citations you know, to your publication also to shows your H index. So uh, Google Scholar gives you a measure of both productivity and impact. The other thing is you make sure everyone should make sure they have an ORCID, ORCID number. And this provides you with a unique identifier that can be used to track your research output and impact across various platforms. So you can use this your number to maintain a comprehensive list of your publication, grants, or other research-related activities. It's very important to have this here. Okay. Then the other one is altmetrics is very key. The university uses it quite a lot, and I'll show you an example. Hopefully, you know, I'll be able to show you the example. It's really good. It tracks the attention that the research output receives online. 
including mentions in news, blog posts, social media, and it provides you with a score and also reflects the level of attention their research is receiving. Then, of course, we have scoops and we have Web of Science. Because of time, I wouldn't want to um, dwell so much on those ones, but they all have their basics. Make sure you're signed up and you're registered in every one of them. I'm going to have a go showing you one of my articles that has a, that ha a very high impact factor, and I shared it a lot on social media. So let's see if we can find it. Can you see it? Uh, not yet. Okay. So what was I to do? Let me go. Let me try and find it. Can you see it now? Hello, can, can you see it? On the slide? So you can see it now. Yeah, it's a slide. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Stop sharing. And then I'll try and share it again. Let me try and share because it's very important. I want to show you this. That's okay. It's <laughs> let me share my time screen then and see if I can see. It. Can you see it now? You are here to share your screen. Okay, let me go back to that. Share. All right, pass now. So what can you see? Because I can't see it. Okay, click on it. Yeah, you, you click on that. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so this is an article I wrote during COVID period, you know, um, COVID-19 pandemic, a review of the global lockdown effect and its far-reaching impact. Okay, so this article was written and you can see, um, looking at the altimetrics. So you can see 17 news outlets, five blogs, one policy source mentioned it, 152 tweeters, two Wikipedia pages, citation 165 dimensions, and you have some readers. So you can see this can show you actually where, what news um, outlets mentioned it, the blogs, the blogs that mentioned it as well, the policy documents, the two policy documents that refer to this article I wrote, the Twitter mentions and people, how many people are following them. So that's quite interesting. And also the Wikipedia mention also. So, and all I did, honestly, all I did was when I wrote this article, because it was very, you know, interesting. I remember thinking about microorganisms, how um, Louis Pasteur mentioned the role of infinitely small in nature is infinitely large. And I was just thinking, you know, imagine viruses we can't even see, how it's impacted the whole world, how it's brought everyone to a standstill. And I decided to write this article and then blogged about it, tweeted about it, and also put it on LinkedIn. Before I know it, voila, explosion. Now we have 220 something citations so far, which is not bad for an article written in 2021. And it's all just to show you how you can measure the impact of social media on your articles. So I'm going to try and go back to the PowerPoint. I don't know. Can you see my PowerPoint? Yes, we can. Sorry, I can't hear you. Yeah. We can see. Okay, cool. Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. Let me go to the last bits then. No, Sorry. you have to share. You have to reshare. You stop sharing that so that we share like the previous one. I'm used to, uh, forgive me, I'm really used to. <laughs> I'm used to link a uh, uh, Zoom, not Google Meet. So it says yes. to stop sharing. Yeah, stop sharing. Okay, one minute. 
perfect. So let's let's share the slide a little now. Okay, so I have to get to the slide. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's good. Okay, so you can see an example of how you can measure the impact of your research, you know, using that particular um, software. So in conclusion, choose the right publication outlets. So choose where you need to identify the most reputable and well-organized journal in your field. Aim to publish your work in those kind of outlets. Very important, okay? So once you've done that, the next step is utilize social media. Share your research on social media platforms such as Twitter, LinkedIn, ResearchGate. Engage with other researchers and share you know, their work also in order to build network with them and increase your visibility. So we share other people's work. The next point is create online presence. Create a professional website if possible. You know, maintain a Google Scholar profile. Use your opt-in to maintain a comprehensive list of all your research activities. This will make it easier for people to find you and also cite your work. Participate is the next point in conference is very important. Okay. Conferences, workshop, and other academic events to present your work, you know, and also to network. Networking is very important and learn about the latest developments in your field. The next point is collaborate with others. Okay, because when you collaborate, this increases your visibility. Co author papers with others and share your work with their network. I had someone that went for an interview and he was a sole author for three or four articles he used for the interview. At the interview, he was asked, how come you co-authored this singly? You know, you're the only author in your three articles. Are you not able to collaborate? Do you find it difficult, you know, connecting with other researchers? And that became a negative thing. He thought it was positive. At least I've done this all by myself. But no, that was kind of negative. You know, because they were feeling he's very not very very good a team player. So how come you're not collaborating with others? So he came back, you know, called me and said, Dr. Helen, what you were telling me is right. I need to be able to connect to other people and collaborate with other people and reach, increase my reach because they didn't get that job eventually. Not just because of that, but that was one thing they picked up that it looks like he's not a team player. So do co-author paper with others and share your work within their network. Then the next point I have is engage with the media. To increase the visibility of your research, write opinion pieces or blog posts related to your research. Share them with relevant publications or news outlets. Okay, very important. And then finally, seek out funding opportunities because that helps to grow your uh, visibility as well. It's very important when you start applying for funding and you're able to conduct high impact research. This will increase your, you know, your, your presence, you know, in that your research area and help to establish yourself as an expert in your field. So I believe, you know, by following some of these steps, you can increase your presence, you know, and recognition of your research, build your network and establish yourself as an expert in your field of research. So finally, I'm open to new connections. And what I do when I go for conferences or when I attend events, I tend to have my um, LinkedIn and people just immediately zap it and connect with me. OK, so you can you know generate this from your LinkedIn profile so people can use a QR code and connect with you instantly. You can have it on your phone. I do that and instantly I connect with people. Thank you so much for your listening. Thank you, Doctor. That was Thank wonderful you so presentation. Much. Yeah, and enlightening. Thank you too. so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you so much.
publish your you know you you showcase your published work there you can upload it there it's free you don't pay for it oh, okay okay any other question oh thank you adekola thanks hello yeah, my question i have a question mm -hmm. or observation yeah okay let me go ahead my name is samuel Lapan. thank you dr helen you didn't disappoint Thank you. Yeah, so I wanted to, maybe this is like uh, a concern. So for LinkedIn, some of us are, are very skeptical or careful not to share data that has not been published in a yeah. bit just to, mm -hmm. to update our LinkedIn. So what do you say to this uh, concerning this? Yeah, I, I'll be, I'm, I'm skeptical myself. I wouldn't share what I've not published. <laughs> on LinkedIn. So don't do that because people can steal your idea. I'm wrong with it. But you can put things like, if you go to my uh, LinkedIn profile, I share things around food safety. You know, I'm not sharing my, you know. So what I share is if I publish the paper, I can do a little bit of synopsis about the paper and put it there. Okay, but I wouldn't share or I can say, oh, I'm working on food waste at the moment. We have some exciting research going on, you know, and then people want to know more. But I wouldn't tell them. I wouldn't put my results. I've not published there. No. So you're right. Okay. Don't do that. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sorry for jumping in. Khadija Slayman speaking from Potaka, please. Okay. Uh, that was a good um, question he asked there because I will say that I didn't know about it. And then the first question he had asked about um, publishing and the cost of it. My own question from that is that my undergraduate um, work that I did, uh, I seem to be the only one that did the research and everything. So how do I go about doing publication on something like that? So did you have a supervisor with you? Yes, I did. So your supervisor will have to be part of it. So you have to get your supervisor involved. And there's yeah. some journals that you can publish for free. So look for those free journals and get your supervisor involved. Try and write. Uh, of the, have you written up the article? No. So try I and write the, the research paper. Okay, okay, okay. So get your supervisor involved because she's she maybe she might be the corresponding author, so she can help. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, thank sorry, you. Please, very much. I, sorry, please. Can I lend a voice to what you just um, mm. said uh, for Kadija? I also wanted to at least Kadija. I think involving uh, another person like a quarter also helps you to stand on someone's shoulder. Let's say you you featured your your supervisor on that uh, publication. Now it's going to help you if she has published several works. It's going to help your visibility more for you that is just uh, studying so more people can because of her because she's mentioned that they can also see okay. your work easily okay. thank you and, okay and it wouldn't matter if it's just like um two persons on the paper no if you wanted to have more than two you have to ask a supervisor because you have to be very careful you know oh, some supervisors yeah. don't like bringing people on board that did not really fit in you know do you understand but if someone was going okay. to help you write the article or contribute to it then you can ask your supervisor is that okay if i bring someone to contribute to this article can they be part of that article so make sure you're very transparent in everything you're doing so you don't okay. get into trouble yeah okay, okay. and if you can ask, you. okay get someone to help because i'm very busy and then the person can be part of the article then that way you can go ahead and invite someone else to help you so you can work well you know um fine-tune the article and publish it Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much, ma'am. Thank you. Does um, Jerry Olowitz Shagan also have a question? Because I see you with your hands up. Hello. Uh, okay, it's probably not around. Um, Awini Moses as well raises up his hand. Do you have a question, please? Yeah, I have a question. Um, Thank you very much, Dr. Helen. Um, I'm Thank Moses Awini from Ghana. Yeah. So um, my question is, um, aside um, you publishing uh, your research uh, work on LinkedIn, for instance, we upcoming researchers, uh, researchers like this, most uh, most of the time wouldn't be having, um, let me see, a research work to publish. So let's say aside those publishing a research work, what else can I do in order for me to like make my social media page like very active? Yeah, thank you. 
yeah, if you were, I don't know when you joined because I did give a lot of tips on what you can do. Oh, okay. I joined I join later. I joined later. Okay. That's okay. That's yeah. right. Sorry about that. So if you can ask for the uh, PowerPoint, you know, I can send it, you know, if you wanted to look at it. There are certain tips, like you can po uh, post on your new job, post about um your area. For example, in food microbiology, I post about different things about microbes. Okay. okay. You know, different types of microorganisms, the impact in food industry, spore formers of interest, anything in the area. So you don't have to be. And uh, the one other thing I post, like for example, graduation, when my students are graduating, I put it there, I celebration, anything, you know, that is relevant, that will promote my program because I want to promote MS food safety. If that makes okay. sense. So you can put okay. things that are relevant to what you're doing at the moment. What are you doing? What job are you working? Are you schooling? What do you really like about what you're learning at the moment? Why is it of interest? Why is it important? You'll be surprised at people. And then you tag on people that you know that have a lot of followers. Okay, okay. that's a okay. When you tag them, then people get to see your post and then they'll connect okay. with you. Yeah? Okay, thank you very much. I hope your um, slides will be shared with us. Yeah. I <laughs> Hopefully, yes. Yeah. yeah, thank you. I think we work on it and the the, 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 the webinar is changed on the YouTube. So if you go to the YouTube channel, we have some people there currently. So as much as you go there, you can have access to all the lectures our prof has actually given us today. Yeah, go back to you, Princess. Uh, we have a badare at the next one. Do you have a question as well? Yes, I do have a question. Good afternoon, um, everyone. And thank you very much, Dr. Ellen. I really enjoyed um, everything that you said. Okay, so my question is, I had kind of been confused between publishing on a, um, a particular journal and then, you know, publishing on, let's say, Google Scholar. So if, for instance, I'm done with writing the article, the research, everything, and I want to publish it, do I, because I know that there are certain, um, journals that i can publish them to so do i publish them there and then still publish on google scholar or how does it work okay how it works is once you've read it to your article actually while you're writing your article what i tend to do is to think what audience do i want so there are different tools you can use called journal finder for example elsevier has got a journal finder Wiley, they have a journal finder. So in the journal finder, you put in your abstract and your keywords, and it give you journals that fit in, that are most likely going to publish the article. Or Taylor and Francis, any of these top publishers, use the journal finder to find the article, to, you know, the right journal to publish in. Okay, so that's step number one. Once the article is gone through peer review and you have published it, it automatically it gets into um google scholar you don't even have to put it there google scholar just i don't know how they just get it there you know and you know once you have your profile it will show up in google scholar uh, scholar if you've got a profile set up there it picks up your name and it populates it for you so you don't have to unless you want to publish with google um education ed edu i don't i just go straight to um the um publishers i've just mentioned wiley um Elsevier, Taylor and Francis, any of those ones, I, I they're my first point of call. And I use their Google uh, journal finder to see the journal that fits that best suits my article. Thank you very much. I, I do understand. Thank you. Okay. No problem. We have um we have two more from Aziz Dauda. Aziz Dauda. Do you have a question? Yes, ma'am. Um, good afternoon, Dr. Eileen and uh, others. Good I'm so grateful for beautiful presentation. However, my question is a little bit different from what you have just presented. Please, pardon me, ma'am. I am actually writing an article currently, and um, while checking the plagiarism content, I have, um, let's say, reduced the plagiarism content of the body to some extent. But the plagiarism content of the reference, I mean the list of reference, is giving me a step back, about um, more than 30% plagiarism uh, content. Is that an idea this? Thank you. 
<laughs> what happens is when you it depends on the plagiarism uh, checker you're using when i use it i exclude citations and um references so when journals check for plagiarism they don't check the references yeah they exclude that so um that 30 percent will be gone off because it's not they, they check mostly the content what you've written so you should be okay if the content is okay all right yeah, i'm so glad to meet no problem thank you thank you very much to helen uh we have another question sorry uh from victor and Weze. Okay, um, thank you very much, uh, um, Dr. Helen. My name is Victor. Well, thank you. It was a nice presentation, and though, even though I joined halfway um, the presentation. But, okay. um, my name is Victor Nwese, and I'm an Erasmus student, currently conducting my second semester at Medical University of Gdansk in Poland. I just want to, I have a comment and I have a question. Yeah, so the, um, the comments was just based on what a question someone asked. And I think it has been repeated, but in different ways. And that is based on um, trying to publish in LinkedIn, publishing in Google Scholar, just the word publish. I think you don't really publish here. It's more like you um, showcase your, yeah. your work, published work in some journals in those platforms. So you have Google Scholar, you have Clarivate, and you have a number of them. Those ones, some of the um, MBs and the rest, some of them are called um, search engines for academic research, right? Why is those other ones, just like Dr. Helen mentioned? I'd just like you to maybe shed a little more light on what you what the so, such perspective articles are. Thank you. Okay. Perspective articles. Thank you so much for your comment, Victor. That was um, good for, to bring clarity. Yes, you don't publish on those places. You showcase your published work. Now, in terms of per, per commentary and perspective, I find it the easiest way to start writing articles if you're interested in writing articles because it's about your own perspective. How do you see it? okay or commentary so it's all based on your you know how you see that particular area or topic so in terms of perspectives you tend to there's a particular format it follows so and they're normally short articles two pages maximum sometimes where you write about you know what the question is what the problem is then you tend going to talk, give recommendations and you know ways you can actually address that problem so it's very simple way of writing. And if you're wanting to start writing, when I teach writing articles, we start with perspective and we start with commentary because they're like two pages maximum. So, and they're, you know, it's very simple, your own opinion anyway. So, which is quite good sometimes to um, start from that area before delving into writing research articles. So I'm not sure, you know, if that's what you're thinking of. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. We have one other hand from Suleiman Ibrahim. Do you have a question, Suleiman Ibrahim? Okay. Um, I'll take that as a no. Thank you very much, Dr. Helen. Thank you, Princess. That was such a lovely lecture. I really, I learned a lot from it though. I never knew I could merge like, you know, two social medias together, like the way you did with Twitter and LinkedIn. I'll probably try that. And LinkedIn is actually a very good platform because that's where I got my job from. Oh, and, really? Good. Yeah, I work at uh, ALS Environmental as a microbiology analyst, which is like really good. So I would definitely recommend LinkedIn. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you to the host too. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you for having me, Dr. Ladipo. <laughs> yeah, I think it's nice having all of us. Thank you, Princess. Thank you, Prof. Ellie. Uh, and I think I have to thank the participant too uh, for joining and for believing in this. And I want to appreciate 
all of us, even the team here too, and my technical team that are trying to stream from Google Meet to YouTube and trying to make sure the internet is working fine. So I really thank everyone, even from the designer of the flyer, uh, for people that have circulated it online, those who are admitting people, those who are recording it, I really say a big thank you to each one of us. And we are trying to do this often and often, just in a couple of uh, weeks more, it's going to see another advert coming out. I've gotten a professor from ABBA too that will be speaking to us on a particular topic. And just to say that we African scientists too, we can come together, benefit from our soil and make ourselves a better scientist for the benefit of humanity. Uh, I want to say thank you to everyone because we've learned one hour and this is just uh, like uh, one thing, like I tell my moderator that we have to run about this time. So for those who miss out, we send another email showing you the link on the YouTube. You can share it on your LinkedIn. If you get to the Elix, share it, tag us, tell people what you have learned, tell, tell about Prof, tell about what you have gained from our presentation. So even if you watch the video several times, you may not even need the slide again because she, she, she was talking to the slides. So, and even for other participants that registered that put it for maybe for one reason or the other, we will share the link of the YouTube across the thing so that they can have something gain from this. Even I've learned like uh, W Atrometric now I have to sign in for that to include uh, my thing. Like Princess said, I have to integrate my LinkedIn, my Twitter and Instagram together now so that when I post once, it's run through others. Uh, and I know that Prof has been so, so uh, very, very, uh, active on these uh, social media. So prop on behalf of all the participants and our team here, we say a big thank you to you. And thank we hope you. by next time we call on you, you will definitely answer us. Definitely. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Princess. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you Helen. Bye, thank you, everyone. Bye. bye. So bye, everyone. Thank you so much, everyone. See you. Thank you. Have a good time. Bye. Bye, bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Happy birthday, Dr. Kala. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're just having a good time. Thank you, everyone. Uh, let's, let's, cele let's celebrate it. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, I said put I'm ready to begin anyway. Okay, we said that. Okay. 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 All right.